Hi, I'm Dennis Jess. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about that one topic that I think most of us deal with, myself included a little bit, and that is dental anxiety or a fear of going to the dentist or dental procedures, that kind of a thing. And I mean, I get it. Who likes to go sit in a chair, you have all these bright lights in your face, you get things, sharp things poked into your gums, it's painful, it can be long, you have stuff in your mouth, you can't breathe, it's anxiety inducing. Um, so yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about dental anxiety, what it is, uh, a lot of the times what it's caused by, and some of the things that you can do. I'm gonna give you five things that you can do to try and reduce that anxiety before your next dental appointment. So let's get right to it. So what is dental anxiety? Dental anxiety basically is a fear, nervousness, phobia, that kind of a thing of going to the dentist, whether it's going in for a cleaning, if it's going in for a checkup, if it's going in just to have your teeth looked at. Um, it's basically that overwhelming fear that you get, that pit in your stomach, that butterfly kind of feeling, um, shakes, nervousness, nausea um, before dental treatment. The problem with dental anxiety is that a lot of the times what happens is you don't want to go. So you don't go because it's unpleasant. You've had an unpleasant experience. So it makes you not want to go the next time. So you kind of delay it, delay it, delay it until whatever happens ends up getting worse to the point that then you have to go because you're in so much pain, you have to go to the dentist. And then once you get there, it's some kind of bad prognosis. They tell you that it's something like a root canal or you need to have a tooth taken out or whatever. And it's a terrible experience. So then what it does is makes you not want to go again the next time. And it's just this vicious cycle that keeps repeating itself over and over. Um, and I mean, it's not pleasant for you. It's not pleasant for me as a doctor. It's really sad. I hate seeing people who are um, anxious or afraid of me. It's not, it's not what I want. It's not what you want. So basically it's this vicious cycle that just keeps happening. There are three reasons that people are typically afraid of the dentist. The first one is actually from a bad experience in the past. So a lot of the times I'll hear people who come in and they're like, oh, when I was a kid, I had all my teeth ripped out and ever since then I've just been terrified to come back. Or, oh, I had to have a tooth taken out and the dentist couldn't get it out and he was up on my chest and he put all of his weight on me and he's trying to reef it out of there and it just wasn't coming and now I can't go back. Or I had this root canal and it just was problem after problem and then the tooth broke down and the file broke down and now I've had all this pain ever since and it's just, so you have these negative experiences in the past that are then making you afraid and rightfully so to go back in the future and then what happens is because you're afraid you don't want to go back and then it just ends up getting worse and you have that similar experience happen again so that's the first one a negative bad experience from the past the second one is actually hearing it through someone else so we see this a lot of times in kids whose parents have had a bad experience what happens is the child hears from mommy or daddy that oh my gosh, it's so scary, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna be in so much pain, you're in so much trouble. And so the kid shows up already for the dental appointment, terrified of getting anything done because of something they've heard. Similarly with siblings, you see this a lot of times, your brother had something done and you as the younger sister or brother hear about it and it's this traumatic experience and it's terrible and it's scary and you come in not knowing what to expect and you're nervous and you already have this nervous, anxious feeling and you didn't even, you didn't have any prior experience with it. So that's the second reason. The third reason is actually linked to a loss of control. So, I mean, it's pretty violating. You're sitting in a chair, someone that you don't really know that well is looking in your mouth, which is actually pretty intimate. And they're telling you all of this stuff. They're talking in a language that you don't really understand. And you have this loss of control. You don't really get to decide what's going on. You don't really know what's going on. You have all these questions maybe, and you're just not really sure what the heck is going on and you don't have a lot of say about it. So there's this lack of trust. And for a lot of people, that lack of control and that lack of trust is actually something that can contribute to a lot of anxiety and fear. There's five things that we can actually do to try and help prevent this anxiety. I know I've given you a bit of a backstory as to what causes it a lot of the times and even what it is. So let's talk about what you can actually do to make it less fearful. Number one, this is basically advice that they give you anytime you do anything stress inducing, whether it's a big game, whether it's a big test, whether it's a dental appointment, and that's the day before to make sure that you have a really good um, 
you have good meals, you're getting a lot of exercise, you're well hydrated, you're taking care of yourself. So super important the night before to make sure that you have a really good sleep. If you're anxious or nervous and you can't fall asleep, maybe try taking some melatonin, have some tea, have a hot bath, that kind of a thing. Try and just relax yourself, bring that anxiety down so you can get a good restful sleep. Um, showing up to your appointment the next day on two, three hours of sleep, all that's gonna do is make you even more stressed out. Your emotions are gonna be on high. You're gonna have even more anxiety than you would have. So really getting a good night's sleep the night before and then making sure that you have a good meal before the dental appointment. A lot of the times people will show up and they haven't eaten. And first off, if you do need to have any dental anesthetic or it's numbing or freezing, um, it's going to actually not be favorable. You might feel your heart race a little more. You might be a little bit sicker to your stomach if you haven't eaten. The other thing is that we usually do things to your mouth and afterwards, lots of the times you can't eat. So now you went from not eating for maybe an hour or two to like maybe four or five. So make sure that you eat beforehand. So number one, take care of yourself. Get a good meal, have a good night's sleep, um, make sure that you're exercising, drinking lots of water, that kind of a thing. Number two. Number two is really important and it actually falls a little bit more on you and that's making sure that you're taking care of your oral hygiene. So you really wanna make sure that at home you're doing your job. You're flossing at least once a day, you're brushing morning and night, you can use mouthwashes, drinking water after you eat meals, um, even chewing things like gum with xylitol in it will actually help to prevent dental, dental decay and gum disease which will actually help you to not have as many problems when you come to the dentist, which will make it less fearful for you. So if you come in every time and we're always saying, oh, you've got 18 cavities and you need three root canals and you need four teeth taken out. And I mean, that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. If I had a doctor tell me that I needed to have three of my teeth taken out, I'd probably burst into tears. So I get it. I totally can understand where you're coming from, but making sure that you're doing your part at home to make sure that your teeth are in the healthiest state that they can be when you go in will help make sure that it's not as scary the next time you have to go back. Number three, bring your iPhone, bring an iPad, bring some kind of device that you can put headphones into so that you can sit there and actually listen to something that you wanna enjoy. Um, the sound of the hand pieces for a lot of people isn't pleasant. The suction's noisy and it's not really the most fun to sit there and listen to. So if you have something that you enjoy listening to, First, it's a good distraction. And second, it actually will kind of drown out some of that noise where people get a little bit nervous and anxious. So bring headphones, bring your favorite podcast or your favorite YouTuber and listen to them while they're doing the work. It makes the procedure go by a lot quicker and it actually is a lot more um, distracting, which will help reduce those anxiety levels as well. Number four, talk to us. It's really important to talk to your dental health provider, whether it's your assistant, your dental hygienist or the dentist themselves ask questions. If you don't know what's going on and you're nervous and you don't understand things, a good way to reduce that anxiety is to just ask. We're here to help you. We want to help you. We don't want you to be afraid of us. The last thing I want is for my patient to be afraid of me. So ask. If you don't know what's going on, you don't understand the language that we're using, you're apprehensive, you're afraid, ask us to, or ask for us to show you the things that we're going to use, the materials we're going to use, what we're, what we're doing, what's the procedure, why do we do it the way that we do, that kind of a thing. We're here as your healthcare provider. So if you're feeling anxious or uncertain or apprehensive about any form of treatment, just ask. Let us know why you're afraid. Let us know what you're afraid of. Maybe we can help to reduce that anxiety. And finally, number five, the fifth point to reduce your dental anxiety is to just keep in mind that we're patients too. A lot of the times I think that people forget that the dentist is also a human and that we have to go in for dental treatment and for a lot of us it's also not pleasant. So keep in mind that we're not up on this pedestal where we have this amazing mouth and we've never had any issues and we've never had to have dental anesthetic given or whatever, but we actually are people and so we have to come in or we should be coming in every six months or so for our cleanings and we should be coming in for regular exams. And so I think a lot of the times we forget that the dentist or the hygienist is actually a patient too, so we know how it feels. So if you're feeling anxious, back to point four, talk about it. Talk about it with your dental team. My final thoughts on this are if this still sounds really scary or you're still really apprehensive or you have a lot of treatment that needs to get done and chances are it's probably gonna make it worse for your dental anxiety than better, a good option to look into is dental sedation. 
whether it's an oral sedation where you take a medication the night before and the morning of, or inhalation, which is nitrous oxide, where you breathe it in and it kind of helps to just take the edge off a little bit, or it's full IV or general sedation where you get put, put to sleep or you're pretty out of it. Talk to your dental healthcare professional about different options for you. I'd rather see my patients be comfortable and relaxed and okay and wanting to come back then put them through a traumatic process that will never want them to sit in the dental chair again. So make sure to talk to them about your options for sedation. That's it for dental anxiety. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.